Hey everyone, Spicy Toes Gaming here. Thank you for tuning in to another video. Today's video is a guide for Thresh in Path of Champions. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get into it. First, we have a brief overview of the champion and their playstyle, so that you have a better understanding on if this champion is someone you want to invest your time and shards into. Up first, we have Expendable Units. This is a Shadow Isles deck, so quite often you will be sacrificing your own units for some additional benefit. Next, we have Swarm Playstyle. Since you're benefiting from your own units dying, you want to be able to summon many new units to replace them, so quite often you're going to have a full board of cheap units. Next, we have Support Champion. Thresh's level up allows him to summon a Support Champion from your hand or deck without having to spend the mana to actually play them. This allows Thresh to go into a more supportive playstyle and potentially cheat out a very expensive champion. Last up for our overview, we have Slow. Thresh does play much slower than most other decks, so he can struggle going up against some of the more aggressive opponents in Path of Champions. That's it for our overview, let's hop in game and take a deeper look at Thresh. In game now, we have Thresh at level 23 and 2 stars. Taking a look at Thresh himself, he is a 5 cost champion, so a bit on the higher side. We do have ways to reduce that down, which we'll get into a little bit later. He is a 3-6 with challenger, and has the level up condition of I've seen 6 units die. Once he levels up, he goes to a 4-7. Now the next time he attacks, he summons another attacking champion from your deck or hand. This gives Thresh his supportive play style, and can really help swing matches in your favor. Thresh's support card is The Box, a 4 cost fast spell that deals 3 damage to each enemy that was summoned this round. It is an interesting spell, and one that really rewards correct timing and game knowledge. Up next we have Star Powers. For the first Star Power we have Savor the Screams. Round start for each ally that died last round, grant a random ally 1-1. This feeds into your expendable units and swarm playstyles. The more units you have die each round, the bigger buff you'll get next round. For the second star power, we have Come Out and Play. Plus one starting mana, and now, Thresh costs one less for each ally you've slain this game. This normally only contributes to getting Thresh out about one round earlier, and while that is nice, the star power is not as impactful as I was initially hoping. Lastly, for his third star power, in addition to the original effect, now when an ally dies, his keywords are granted to a random ally next round. Interesting to see what we'll be able to do with this, but I haven't been able to test this out quite yet. Taking a look at his starting deck, first we have the Wings in the Wave with Farsight. Very nice, good versatile card, either letting you play this as the first wave where you summon two very cheap units that you can easily use to kill or just fill out your board, or you can do the Last Wind where you're able to kill a unit, which again is going to contribute to making Thresh cost one less. We have the Warden's Prey, great card. Last Breath, create another random Last Breath follower that costs three or less. So you have a unit that you're incentivized to kill because if you kill it, you get another Last Breath unit, which can be quite nice. We have the Cursed Keeper. This can't block, but you have the Challenger on it. Last Breath, summon a Escaped Abomination. So you're able to attack with this, challenge with it, and then once it dies, you can get the Escaped Abomination, a very powerful 3-3. This unit, while it does have a very weak attack, will later get a pickaxe, so it's going to have several extra points of power, so it can normally take out whatever enemy unit you are challenging if you're playing this in the early game. We also have Vile Feast for some great removal. Now this says drain one from a unit to summon a spiderling. You can use this on the enemy, or you can use it on your own unit to kill them, again reducing down the cost of your thresh, and once this goes off you also get the spiderling, and this is going to deal two damage with that charging sigil. Camavorian Soldier, when I'm summoned, summon a Encroaching Mist, so right here, nice one drop, and then this card, when I'm summoned, grant all other Viegos and other Encroaching Mists everywhere, 1-1. One, one. This works out great if you end up using Viego as a support champion, as you can actually go more into an Encroaching Mist playstyle of trying to play a lot of these cards and buffing them all up as well as your other Viegos. Next up, we have the Phantom Prankster, very much a staple in many of the Shadow Isles deck. It has Chain Vest and later 
gets the Savage Shield, which gives it one attack and three more health. Really going to be a tanky unit that can sit on the board and survive. Quite often, this card, since it's staying on the board, is going to be getting a lot of those buffs from your star powers, since all your other units are dying except this one. And then it's an effect, when an ally dies, deal one to the enemy nexus, further incentivizing you to have a lot of cheap units that are constantly dying, since every time they die, not only are they buffing units next round, but they are also damaging the enemy nexus. Next up we have Spirit Leech. This is the same card from Kindred. Little sad to see it repeated, but it is a solid card. Little expensive at a 4 cost, but 4 power, kill an ally to draw 2. So again, further working on killing your own units, reducing down the cost of your Thresh, and giving you a decent amount of draw. Lastly we have Thresh at the 5 cost, which normally should be a bit cheaper, and we have Vengeance down to also a 5 cost. So this is a fast spell and just kill a unit. Very nice to see this, gives you great removal. This doesn't actually deal damage, it just kills the unit. So even if a unit has barrier, doesn't matter, this will still kill them. Excellent removal, great to see this in this deck. Next up, we have Relics. What I'm running right now is Curator's Gatebreaker and Guardian Angel. This works very well together, especially if you can get something like Stabilize or Twin Shadows, since that ephemeral version you're summoning when you're summoning Thresh will also hit the Nexus, immediately die, and then summon another copy that will then do the same. Works out quite well together. Otherwise, Gatebreaker isn't the best for Thresh since he has such a low attack, but when paired with Guardian Angel, it can work out quite well. What I would actually advise people running if they're able to is go with the Corrupted Star Fragment, support, kill my supported ally and grant me its stats and keywords, great for killing your own units, and putting all those stats on Thresh so he can try to end the game. Quite often you do have a full board, so you're wanting to kill your own units anyway, and then if you use that with Succubus Brand, 1-1, one, one, and when I kill a unit, summon a random husk. So the husks, that is what normally Evelyn uses, but if you do have Succubus Brand, I do think it would work out great when paired with Corrupted Star Fragment. As far as some other relics that I do want to shout out, Crown Guard Inheritance works quite well with Thresh. I find that normally Thresh levels up when he's attacking, so normally you can attack, you'll level up, and so after that attack you then have that rally so you can attack again and hopefully end out the game. Guardian's Trinket is a interesting one for Thresh, so adventure start, add two copies of a random champion to your deck, attach a random item to it. Now this can be good, this was the first rare relic I tried. I never really got lucky, but you can get some great champions that you can then pull out of your deck with Thresh. If you're wanting much more of a random lottery style playstyle, definitely go with Guardian Trinket. It can work out quite well for you. It also may have more of a negative effect. If you are going for Crown Guard Inheritance, so that level up rally, you may want to also consider using Tempest Blade when I level up stun all enemies. That way you're more likely to be able to attack and just finish out the game. The Berserker Buckle also works quite well with Thresh. When I survive damage, grant me 2-2. Thresh is relatively tanky and has Challenger, so you normally will be able to use him to block or when you attack, make sure he has a blocker. So throwing on some of the Berserker's Buckle can really make your Thresh scale out of control. Bounty Hunter's Renown, always good if you have an extra rare relic and you just want some extra stats. This will really help you throughout the game. The Grand General's Counter Plan. Now while this is normally one of my favorite relics to use, as it essentially gives the champion their support card every round, and can also work as a bit of safety just in case your champion gets killed, you have another fleeting copy you can play. While I think this may work well for Thresh, it does have a bit of an issue where the box is inconsistent. Some rounds, if you use it well, it can be absolutely amazing, but other rounds might not help you out too much. I need to play a little bit more with the Grand General's Counter Plan. I think it's a relic that if you really want to focus around it, it can work out quite well for you, but I think if you're not as good with using the box, really you're going to have some pretty terrible results. Last up for Rare Relics, I did try the Scourge's Stash, just try to double down on reducing Thresh's cost. Didn't work out too well in my opinion. Normally want to get your unit out before the attack, whereas I found with the Scourge's Stash, normally you're not going to be able to do that. You end up playing Thresh after the attack, and it doesn't really feel as good as it does on most other champions. Troll King's Crown, not bad, letting your units be able to punch through the enemy nexus can be helpful, but often I find most of your units aren't that strong to begin with, and so I think this has less value than on many other champions. For common relics that I want to highlight, I think Stormraiser works pretty well with Thresh. 
Challenger and Quick Attack is always a very powerful combo, so using that can be quite nice. Chameleon's Necklace to put more copies of your Thresh, also nice to have so that you always are going to be able to play one when you need it. Star Child Staff, this is a very nice common relic, just giving you a bit more sustain, so if you're taking a little bit more damage, this is going to help you heal up before those boss fights. Normally at the healer, you can then cut a card instead of having to actually heal. And lastly, we have the Z Drive Prototype. Start the game with two more rerolls. So if you want to try your luck and get the right powers you're looking for, this can really help you out if you have a common slot to do that. That is it for the relics as well as the in-game portion. Now let's go look at some powers and most importantly, support champions for Thresh. Taking a look at powers now, first I want to start off with a great epic. I normally don't highlight them, but I feel like this one just works too perfectly for Thresh. When you gain the attack token, summon a sapling. Now with Thresh, you want to have a lot of units. You want them to be attacking and also dying. So having ephemeral units is absolutely amazing. So getting one here that you're summoning every single round, you have the attack token, which can be every round if you get rally great power definitely pick it up if you see it afterlife forbidden when an ally dies for the first time summon a haunted tomb since you have so many units dying and you'll wind to refill your board having something like this where first time you have a unit die it's then going to revive them or a more powerful unit if you have one of them die instead this can be quite nice for continually filling out your board seat of power game start summon a emperor's dais this is a slightly worse version of nature's revenge in my opinion now when Whenever you're attacking, you're summoning a attacking sand soldier, which is ephemeral. So it's doing a little bit more damage for you when you attack, but also another unit that's dying. Therefore, another unit that is going to be buffing up your board next round. Next up, we have Vanguard Lookout. Game start, summon two Vanguard Lookouts. So these are very strong blockers. I believe their stat line is 1-4. Again, you're wanting to have a full board so that you can have units attack, die, but also most importantly, always having at least one unit alive on the board so they can get all of the the bonuses from your units dying the previous round. Now any of the powers that summon units at the start of the game work well, I just think Vanguard Lookout works best for Thresh. Welcome gifts when you summon an ally granted a random keyword. This is going to be especially good once you get to your third star power since when your unit dies those keywords are then transferred to a different random ally next round. So I haven't been able to test this out yet as don't have enough shards to get Thresh to the third star power, but this is one that should really shine once you do hit that third star power. Lastly, we have Fixer Up, round start, give your weakest ally 3-3 three, three this round. While this is a good general power, if you're using Corrupted Star Fragment on Thresh, then this is very strong since Thresh can then consume that unit and essentially make this temporary buff now permanent since he consumed the unit with those additional stats, and those stats are now permanently on Thresh. For the last group of powers here, we have Round Start and Rally. Very simple, letting you attack every round. Very, very strong, helps you end the game a bit faster. That's something that Thresh somewhat struggles with. Crush, same thing, just letting you use your power to actually end the game and not getting blocked out. Thresh really struggles with having games go too long, so this can help you out. Then reset, game start, create three chrono breaks in hand. Now this photo is from the previous patch, so here it shows it's a rare. Now I believe this is just a common power. Works out quite well for Thresh since normally you can plan to attack with all your units. Most of them will die, but then you can revive them all and attack again, which really works out quite well. Lastly, we have support champions. Now this is kind of the most important part for Thresh, as often you're going to be wanting to have a great support champion since Thresh's level up is going to be drawing them out and bringing them on the board. But we don't just want to give you champions for you to pick without knowing why you're wanting to pick them. So first we have some things you want to look out for other support champions. First off, we have ephemerals. Ephemerals work amazing for Thresh. You're playing a unit, you know it's going to die at the end of the round, and so those stats, those buffs are are going to be transferred. So playing with a lot of ephemerals, especially looking for ephemeral units in shops, can really help you out and definitely something I recommend paying attention to. Next we have high cost. A high cost champion can really work out well for Thresh since he can cheat that unit out without having to play that high cost. Normally these high cost champions are very powerful so it can really swing the game in your favor. Lastly we have benefits from allied deaths. Since you have so many allied units dying, any other unit or champion that can benefit from those units dying will definitely help you out 
immensely. So first for the actual champions, we have Viego. Viego covers all of these. He is high cost, he benefits from ally deaths because that is part of his level up condition, and he also summons ephemerals. Viego, I think, is the best support champion you can get. You even have the Camivorian soldier already in your deck, so Viego works very well for Thresh. Definitely pick him up if you see him. Next we have Azir. Azir, he's able to summon a lot of attacking sand soldiers. He also benefits from summoning many units, which you're already doing. So he's going to be very easy to level up, but then he's giving you tons of units, tons of ephemerals that are going to be attacking, dying for you, and then buffing up your remaining units. Next we have Lucian. So Lucian, not a high cost card, doesn't have ephemerals, but he does benefit from allied deaths. So you can level him up very easy. And then when he's leveled, he's going to let you rally the first time each round another unit dies or another ally dies and so Lucian can really help you close out the games. He's also an early game champion so if you want to focus on just playing him early and not necessarily having to cheat him out he'll still really help you out and gives you a much different play style than many of the other support champions. Lastly, we have Hecarim. Great for summoning a ephemeral army. Also is a relatively high cost. He works out quite well with Thresh. When you pull him out, you'll probably use him to end the game either that round or the following round. Very powerful champion and synergizes quite well. I think Viego is still probably the best. Hecarim also works very well for you. All right, that is it for the Thresh guide. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. Comment down below how you've been enjoying Thresh so far, and I hope you all have a great day.